how to create amazing compositions with automatic 1111. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? So you can do this amazing thing here with a unofficial extension. So of course, first we need to install that and there is a prior requirement, a uh, so-called dependency, that is another extension you want to have. So in here you go to extensions, you go to available, you click to load from and in that list, you want to look for something called Composable LoRa. When you found that over here, click on install. After that, you go to installed, click on check for updates, and then you want to click on apply and restart UI. After that, close down your automatic 1111. Next, we are going into the automatic 1111 install folder. There you look for extensions, click on that to open that folder. Then up here in the address bar, you click and write CMD. Hit enter. This will open up your command window and you are already in the extensions folder location. Here you want to type the command I show you right now on the screen. I have linked the same command in a Google Doc below that video so you can copy and paste it in there. Hit enter, wait for it to finish and then you can close that window again. Now we are going back to the automatic 1111 root folder. Again, we click up here in the address bar and we write CMD again. So now this opens up the command window in the root folder. Here you want to enter this command. Again, I have linked it in the Google Doc. You can copy it from there, put it in there, hit enter, wait for it to finish and then close the command window. After that, you start your web UI user.bat as normal and go into your automatic 1111 interface. Now you want to go to extensions again, installed again, check for updates, click on apply and restart. Now at that point, of course, I want to point out that this extension is not official and this is why it's not in the extensions tab. So it's kind of unstable. It's kind of wonky on how to get it to work. But if it works, it's pretty magical. So let's see how that's actually done. So back in automatic 1111, you want to scroll down and here you have two new things. One is the composable LoRa. You want to enable this. What this does is that it enables you to work with multiple masks as we have down here for our latent couple. Now, of course, you also want to enable the latent couple. Down here, you see another option I have enabled right now. It's called Denoise Mask. I didn't find that it does anything, so you can enable it or not enable it. Experiment with that. Next, you can draw down here, but I would highly suggest not to do that because I didn't get good results from that. And the drawing process here also seemed a little bit unstable. Sometimes my computer went very slow when I tried to use this. So instead, what you want to do is to go in a simple graphic software. I'm using Affinity Photo here, but you can also use Krita or you can use GIMP. For my test, what I did is to prepare an image in Midjourney as a source for the composition and then put it in the background. After that, I click below the layers tab here to create a new pixel layer. Of course, in a different software, it works a little bit different, but it's a very easy process. And then you take a very strong color and paint in the areas you want to have. So in this case, you can see that I'm painting in the houses. Next, I'm painting in the ground. Next, I'm painting in some neon signs. And next, I'm painting in the rough area where the person is. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that the mask extension does work really well with too small details or with specific compositions or even poses of the character. So you only roughly sketch out where things should be in your creation. Also, I have here some part empty in the background. This is where the original image is still shining through. So I'm going to turn it off. I have a checkerboard here because that is now transparent. But when I save it as a JPEG, this will turn into white. So next, what we're going to do is to drop or click and upload the JPEG into this area here. As you can see, now I have here a white area and I found that the latent couple, this multi mask extension works better when there is some part left that is white because in the white area, you can have the base prompt working 
After you've uploaded the image, you want to click down here on I have finished my sketch. Now what this is doing is it's looking at the colors. This is why they need to be very different and splitting this up into as many masks as you have colors in here. Now next you will realize you have your different text fields and you have different sliders. So let me explain to you what they do. Here we have the general prompt in there. You have to do two very important things. First of all, you need to describe the base scene, not just the style. So in my case, I'm writing raw photo of Cyberpunk Tokyo Neon Alley at night, 8K UHD DSLR soft light, high quality film grain Fuji Film XT3 teal and orange. Now this gives me a basic setup of a Cyberpunk Tokyo Neon Alley. So you also need to describe that this is an alley because of course Stable Diffusion can't figure that out from this roughly drawn mask. Now below that you have these different areas and of course from the original colors of your image you know what you've drawn there. So I'm writing rundown houses, cyberpunk, neon signs, cyberpunk, dirty street, cyberpunk, and then cyberpunk woman with pink hair with a weight of 1.0. You might try to do that. You might not have to do that. There's a lot of experimentation included because this is a very new extension that is still in development. Now let's talk about what are these sliders doing here. First of all, we have the alpha blend up here, and this is deciding how all of the layers are going to blend together. Usually when you started up it's at 0 0.2. I tried different other settings, didn't really improve it. So maybe leave it at 0 0.2. But more importantly, what you have down here is these sliders for each of these individual colors or masks. Now what this does is it defines how gray or white this mask is going to be. So if it is a one, you can see that this is going to be almost white. And the more you go towards zero, this is being a darker and darker gray, meaning a weaker and weaker mask. So with that, you can influence how strong that subject should be in your image. So in that case, because the woman in the image is very important, I leave that at one and I set all the other values to 0 0.5. Now here's a very important thing. Every time you change the text in here, every time you move a slider in here, you have to click on prompt info update because this will both update the text and also the shading of your masks. After you have clicked on that button, the gray value will change. Another important thing here is to set the canvas width and height to the same width and height of your mask image. In my case, 512 by 768. Now, when you click on prompt info update, this will move the prompt info up here in the positive prompt area. The negative prompt area is not touched, so you can write in here anything you need. Of course, you want to set here all of your settings. Now, Another important thing here to realize is first of all, of course, for your rendering, you want to have the same ratio or the same resolution. In my case, I also set it to 512 by 768. Another thing here is when you have your normal value of the CFG scale or even higher down here, this will get oversaturated, overcooked, as you can see here with that example. So you want to set it to a ridiculously low setting. For example, in my case, I have a CFG scale of three, which seems very low. But keep in mind that we are actually combining four different prompts together in my case, because I have four different masks here. And on top of that, we have here our basic prompt at the start. So actually, it's kind of five that are mixed together. In my case, I turned on restore face to get a little bit of a better quality. I also tried with high res fix, well, kind of better, but actually I feel like when you send it afterwards to extra upscale it there and do your face fixing there, that will improve the image a lot more. But I would still advise to have restore face hooked here to get a slightly better result. Now, after this, what you have to do is re-rolling, readjusting the prompts, readjusting the values down here for the different weights, and then see what you get. And when you find a seat that works, you want to put the seat in here and then go on with fine adjustments until you have a result you actually like. Another advice I want to give here is to work with big, rough shapes and then try out if you actually get something that 
resembles these shapes in your results from the rendering. If you don't get anything like that, no matter what you do, your install might not have worked. And sadly, there is not really any kind of error message that is telling you if it works or not. You just have to get it from the results. Another thing you want to try that's pretty important here is to try different models. In my case, I'm using the model deliberate version 1.1. I found that this works better than the version 2 model. And I found that when I use other models, for example, the realistic vision model, that is in general a little bit harder to pick up what you want to have in the prompt, the results of this multi-mask attention is harder to get. So actually deliberate version 1.1 worked pretty well for me most of the time. So let's have another look at the mid journey image here. Now we have overlaid it with the mask and now we have overlaid it with the final result. Now what you can directly see is that the posing of the woman compared to the mask isn't really in the same size, isn't really in the same relation to the other things in the image. And the neon signs didn't pick up at all because probably they are too small in the masked areas and also maybe because there is too many of them spread out over the image. So as a rule of thumb to get this started, use rough, simple shapes in your masks and keep your prompt short to get better results faster, but also to have more control if actually this is following what you put in or if it's just a lucky accident. Let me know in the comments what you think. Leave your results in my Facebook group, in my Discord group and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.